Okay, now, one of the things uh, Point to Points are notorious for, sometimes you have to ride in extremely atrocious conditions and then you've only got a tent to get changed <laughs> in and warmed up. So how, how were those sort of days? And um, do you remember a particular they bad are, day? Those days are the reason that I want to get back doing it. I mean, I would just love, age 45, to take out my licence to ride on the wettest days. When you fall, it's just not going to hurt, are you? All you're going to do is skid. So, <laughs> um, no, I, those are the days I loved. And the way to keep warm on a point-to-point -point course is to ride. I mean, you get pretty warm if you lead up, but definitely riding, um, it's the only way. You see lots of people stood there with loads of coats on, freezing, and you ride in a race, and after the race, you're warm for the next half hour. Perfect. So, no, you, you uh, last season I really missed the point of pointing because it was so wet and um, you're sludging round in the mud at Buckfastley or Wade Bridge and slipping all over the place. Well, the, the best place would have been to be on a horse, popping around. Uh, yeah, popping around. Everything slows down and it's much nicer for the horses. You, it's not great if the rain's going sideways, but actually the horses don't mind. And because they slow all the racing up, it's um, much more about how you ride the horses. It's not just about who's the fastest. Okay, you mentioned a couple of courses there. Were there any in particular that you used to enjoy riding around? Um, well, the, the slower tracks like Weybridge and Buckfastley and Fleet, I, I loved courses where you could nick lengths um, and it wasn't all about speed. Um, yeah, they were, they were some very favourite courses. I did love Lark Hill because I had a lot of lovely rides around Lark Hill. Uh, but you, you more often than not, the best horse wins at Lark Hill. Um, I, I was pretty fond of Chipley Park. Um, it's a dour stayers track. Uh, they've improved the fences every year. I get back and ride at Chipley if I could because they've improved the fences. They've improved the fences actually in point to points throughout Devon because they've got far less of the sloping frame fence uh, fences they used to have and they've now gone for the upright backs and horses jump those a bit better and they're a bit less trappy to ride over. So um, I, yeah, I think Barclay, <clears throat> Woodford, point to point course. I loved the fences there, but I, um, I was always so hopeful of doing well in front of my friends and I usually crashed and burned. And any courses that you didn't particularly <coughs> enjoy? I think well, probably really Barclay, Woodford for that reason. <laughs> um, uh, I think I ended up in hospital uh, after twice after Barclay, which, um, no, I was very lucky. I didn't visit ho hospital too many times from my point of pointing. Um, but yeah, I... Uh, we went further afield. We went to Godstone once. That was a very, very undulating track. I think I would have really liked that track if I'd ridden around it a lot. Um, small fences, very undulating. But no, those, those are. I did used to love La Mala, which is um, the north. I think it was the North Cornwall point to point or East Cornwall point to point. And and you jump the first fence four times. I mean, basically going round and round in circles. But that had a lovely atmosphere. Okay, any particularly memorable races or incident pack races that stick in your mind? Oh, um, no, I was thinking of this earlier. There was an instance of um, uh, Bratton Down, I was riding Let's Fly, and I think there were six of us in the race. It was a ladies' race at the end of the year, and I thought he probably ought to finish fourth, but I was thought I mustn't go in defeated. It was later on in my career. And um, I think both of Philip Hobbs's daughters, Catherine and Diana, had a horse in it each, St. Romble and something else. Uh, Lucy Gardner had her Grace O, who was a good horse at the time, and Rimpton Boy, with Rachel Green on. And we were, I was thinking, well, if I can finish fourth, what is the point in me? You know, I ought to go in there with a much better attitude than that and anyway we jumped out we, we had a typical race where I go slow to start with and then I quicken it up more and I seemed to do the opposite to everyone else and and uh, let's fly one by a half a length and it was just a really great achievement and it was because I had such a willing partner in, in let's fly and that's what um, I try and instill in owners and jockeys that if we can get their horses to just want to win and the jockey be the willing partner to listen to the horse and all they've got to do is know where the finishing post is if you get that horse those horses to really really want to win let's fly was just the most amazing horse and that he wants to win more than any of us and um and, and that's why he 
I was really uh, a necessary evil for poor old Let's Fly to have to carry around with him because he needed to know, he needed someone to tell him where the finishing, finishing line was and that's what I was there for. Okay, so at what point did you s suddenly decide to set your sights on uh, Alison Dare's 287 total? Um, I never, I slightly avoided the whole um, thing in my own mind in that people said, do you think you'll catch Alison Dare? And I thought, well... She's my icon, so why would I, idol, not icon, why would I want to catch someone that I thought so much of? Um, it wasn't a case of me, I rode in point to points because I enjoyed it. I didn't go out to set records or anything else. And records are there to be broken, but it's always a little bit disappointing for some people when they get broken. And Alison Dare was pretty disappointed that I was likely to get near her record and I thought that was rather sad and when I say I thought it was sad I thought it was sad if I was going to go and break her record and it was making her sad um I'm probably a bit too soft but anyway uh it was a case that it was just one of those things that lots of people made a bit of a thing of John Beasley made a bit of a thing of it but um and it came and it went and I, I didn't make a it's a great achievement um because it may, meant that I became winning most point-to-point -point rider Gina uh, Ellis um, could easily break it. She's a um, she's a very good pilot, and she's got a great team behind her. It's, it is again. It's all about the team you've got. But I think um, yes, in raising the bar, hopefully other since I rode and went past that number of Allisons. You've got to remember when Alison Dare was riding, um, they only mostly raced on Saturdays throughout her whole whole of her career. It was only later on in her career. They raced on Sundays as well. Um, but it very much... Uh, bars are raised slightly and the girls that are riding today are differently to what we were doing. Okay, now, you'd have thought that somebody that's ridden 287 minutes was it would be second nature. Was there mm. ever any sort of... Were you ever frightened or was there ever any fear? <laughs> um, later on, I think I was... Later on, I was permanently frightened of being the weakest link of the day and uh, that was my main fear. I didn't love riding on quick ground because I couldn't make adjustments to the horse to help it when when the ground was quick. You have to rely on the, the horse to get it right every single time and I'm probably a control freak so I like to think I was doing something useful. Um, but yeah I think sorry I can't remember that. What was the last bit of that question? Were you ever frightened? Um, or when you went out to ride, did yeah. you have any stage fright? I yeah, I seriously got stage fright in the end. In the end, and I probably would have given up in two thousand and nine. But uh, Ian Channing was going to ride for us um, in two thousand and nine to a greater extent. He rode for us a bit in two thousand and eight, and in a small schooling accident just over poles, he broke his femur in October two thousand and eight. And when I was holding his leg straight because his femur was bent, I said, "I will continue riding." long enough that you get back to ride our horses to help you get back on track and we did that so I did I did that in a bit more but again I was trying to look for the jockeys um, and get people used to our way of doing things so that they could take over from me but it was Ian Channing's breaking his leg that made me ride longer than I would have done. Okay and another um, landmark I would imagine in your career was winning the Fox Hunters at Aintree of the National Fences on Tour Off Express so that must have been a bit scary. Um, no, I remember going to, I say no, what was scary again is me being the weakest link. Uh, when I went to Aintree, having finished third in the Cheltenham um, Fox Hunters, and then a couple of weeks later go to Aintree, and the Cheltenham Fox Hunters, I thought I got the ride absolutely right on him. We jumped the last, virtually upside, with a wet sail coming, and him and last options legs well last options legs were slightly longer than tour Duff's express the rhythm was exactly the same the whole way up but last option had a slightly longer stride and did me by a couple of lengths and so i thought well this is a completely pointless exercise going to entry because after walking the entry course the, the fences weren't that big i know it sounds stupid but in 2000 and when well, it was three two yeah, 2002 um the fences were considerably smaller than they were in 2008 for example when i went back there and rode again and when I walked the course at Aintree, I thought, well, the fences aren't anywhere near big enough. If he likes Aintree and likes jumping big fences, 
we haven't got enough to jump. And so I'd resigned myself to it being a slightly too short a trip for him. Um, I got a good start and I had the most easy ride, enjoyable ride you could ever imagine. It felt like I cheated because I was on a horse that loved Aintree. And Tour Duff Express wouldn't always travel that easily. He, he was a, had plenty of speed and quality about him. But the park horses, um, like especially Haydock, he was quite hard work around there. Um, and Cheltenham was all right, but as soon as he, Tour Duff Express saw the first fence, he went, we're in the right place. And he just grew and he traveled and jumped and it was the easiest ride I've ever had. So it was a bit of a damp squib on, was it frightening? No, because Tour Duff was just a jumping machine. And it really drills at home that the horse does the jumping. Us jockeys sit quiet and present the horse well at a fence so the horse can get on and do his job. And would you have had a crack at the national itself if you had the chance? Yeah, very definitely. We had um, John Burbage uh, owned Miss, Mrs B um, and Mrs B was entered for the national and missed it by two. Um, so she wasn't even on the reserve list. That's when they first brought out reserves, I think. And uh, so, no, we were going to have a go at that. Mrs B finished third in the cross-country race at Cheltenham over three miles seven early on, um, early on in that cross-country races um, era. So, yeah, I think um, Mrs B would have just jumped around, probably not had quite enough quality to really figure in the first four or five, but I think she would have given me a hell of a ride. Now, I think you, you rode uh, 303 winners in That's total. Right. What was it kept you driven to achieve what you were doing during your riding career? I just enjoyed it. I enjoyed going, um, I enjoyed young horses. Uh, I didn't always love the horses who were odds on favourites. I enjoyed young horses that were struggling to get round or struggling to be understood. I always enjoyed maiden races. Um, they go a bit slower. And again, as a rider, I could have uh, a more positive con contribution to how a horse is running and getting its confidence. Um, and... Uh, I also enjoyed the parties and you know, I was always a bit disappointed that they quite often in the old days the men the maiden races were the last race of the day and because I enjoyed riding the maidens by the time I got changed after riding in the last race everyone else had buggered off home <laughs> but there was usually a few hardcore car boots left for me to go and have a social sociable chat with someone okay so, and what so what do you enjoyed it so much what was the ultimate reason for retiring um I was getting because I was always worried about being the weakest link and I wasn't as fit I was training horses more at home than I um, had been and and I I wasn't I wasn't as fit or as strong probably not probably getting a bit idle probably doing too much at home doing too much training um, made me more tired for the weekends um, employing staff definitely makes you a little bit more tired because you've got to think on your feet a lot more and it was it was just the way life was changing that I, Ed said that, um, well, I was aware that I was getting grumpy from about Friday morning onwards because I was preparing myself to ride in a race. And uh, Ed, after I finished, said, well, you had to be grumpy because you rode much better when you were grumpy. So he encouraged me to be <laughs> um, bad-tempered because he felt I rode better like that. And that was getting hard work. For If you do that from the beginning of January to the end of May, being grumpy from Friday morning until Sunday afternoon. It's not a whole lot of fun for even me, let alone everyone else who's around me. <laughs> and, and life's totally changed now because you were a mother of two children. Would you encourage them to be point-to-point -point riders? Um, not particularly. Uh, if they want to go down that route and then do it, absolutely fine. But anyone that wants to ride in point-to-points must be very aware of the risks involved, the hardship of falling. Um, I never really minded falling. So that's fine, but if anyone, you've got to be second nature to fall. I could really enjoy the falls that I had, some of them I had, um, which sounds a bit wrong, but it, it's, it's the same as lads falling off skateboards or anything else. It, it's, you, you want to be physically very fit to fall. It's not about being fit to ride, it's being fit to fall. Um, and if my children were fit to fall and really enjoyed jumping fences at speed, I will support them every inch of the way. Um, but if they're half-hearted and they're doing it because they think they ought to, I won't encourage them at all.